Hello everyone, today we talk about the arias in the medieval imagery, starting from, arbitrarily, the uh, July 1987 dig diggings carried out in Jordan, uh, about 80 kilometers south of Amman, uh, in the um, Nabatean, a Roman, uh, eventually Byzantine city of Um Ar Rasas. Well, the excavations were directed by Professor Michele Piccirillo of the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum in Jerusalem. And during a pause uh, in the works, an archaeologist listlessly uh, turned a large sandstone that had fallen from a cornice, and on the face of that stone that the uh, ground had preserved for so long, a very delicate sculpture dated to the 6th, 7th century uh, AD appeared. An adult male sheep with uh, a beautiful large spiral shaped horns. A ram or rather an arius. Now with the ram, the young and daring male of the flock, we mm, are mm, in front of a zoomorphic symbol that uh, is really nodal in Eurasian culture. Youth, sanity, cheerfulness, aggression, strength, boldness are concentrated in this splendid, uh, splendid young animal, with hair often depicted candid or more often golden yellow, right? And the golden fleece of the myth, but also of the Bible, immediately comes to mind. And as you know, also the the prestigious order, the Burgundian and then Habsburg golden fleece, um, that. Uh, represents, in fact, the uh, ship's skin and astral uh, figure, too, uh, corresponding to the constellation that marks the entrance into spring, so the beginning of the year, when mm, of elder uh, societies, when uh, the born of the flock began, began to move away from their mothers and to tumble and feel the incipient horns in their foreheads. So the Arius has a clear solar warrior and phallic value, Right, not by chance the war machine that takes uh, its name is uh, the one that lands and impacts and violates its doors, right? And uh, on the other hand, it is in the Hellenic Roman world uh, as well as in the biblical one uh, the the designated victim of sacrifice as well. And since lambs are often sacrificed, they are about to reach a mount of life and whose horns are about to sprout, or have already sprouted, it, it is difficult to say actually where the lamb ends and where the arias begins. Now, the same indecision is noted in the Christian world, where the lamb, so this central symbolic figure of the incarnation and of the Eucharist mystery is often depicted as a ram, and where the good ram is often opposed to the bad goat, with a precise opposition based on the concept of purity impurity. And as we will see, in fact, the Christian world would draw, right, both iconography respectively for in, a, in a positive and negative sense, properly, you know, God and, and devil, right? And uh, think about the lamb, I think about the goat, uh, so, you know, Satan's horns and all that. So, uh, irresistible sexual force as well, absolute and perfect power. So the Arius is conceived in all this as a virgin as well, because it represents properly the, the newborn, that the regeneration has not been spoiled fundamentally uh, again. And uh, as we were saying before, it's with spring, the new year, the new life begins. So this distinguishes it from the ram, the adult male father of the flock. Right? The Arius is never old. Uh, in, a, in astrology, the Arius is closely connected with the planet Mars and with the god who gives its name. And in uh, John Foxton's Cosmographia in 1408, a small Arius is placed, in fact, on the head of the god Mars himself. Um, and in the correspondence between uh, co uh, you know, constellations and parts of the body, that are so, that was so important in astrological medicine. Arius, in fact, rules the head. The disease is connected to the head. Uh, the first attestation of divinity of the ram comes from the island of Elephantine near Aswan, and from the god Knum, 
that is probably a god ram, a lord of cold water, and god potter, that is the shaper of human beings. Perhaps it was precisely the ram, the, the artist's youthful ability to reproduce its fecundating force that inspired the cult. Instead, um, it's no longer so much the man maker as the universal lord the one who is worshipped in Karnak, in the temple erected during the Middle Kingdom, so roughly between the 21st and 16th centuries BC, in honor of the Chrysophilus god Amun, or Amun, that so much fortune would have also later, uh, as we will see in Hellenistic symbology. In the temple of Karnak, is uh, accessed by walking along a large avenue flanked by sphinxes, which, like the god, have the head of a ram, identified with the greatest solar god and worshipped, in fact, as Amun-Ra, the uh, Ram god remained among the most popular mythical figures in Egypt. Later, between the 8th and the 7th centuries BC, a dynasty of Ethiopian princes who created a great kingdom centered between the 3rd and 5th cataracts and which dominated the entire Nilotic belt from the south of Khartoum to Thebes gave new impetus to the cult of Amun, the center of which became the, the holy city of Napat. It is perhaps due to these late Ethiopian pharaohs that the Ram God spread in Central Africa. Marcel Griot uh, traced him with, um, let's say, with agrarian and fecundating functions to the dogma. And the cult of the uh, Ram also survived in the center of Meroe, from which it is used to indicate as Meroitic, in fact, all this Egyptian Ethiopian civilization, which has perhaps had an incalculable importance as a nodal center of culture between Egypt, Central Africa, and the Arab Asian world. Um, let's say this: this uh, the Dram finds mm, many hundreds of kilometers to the east beyond the Indian Ocean, an important counterpart in the cult of the Ram among the Aryan civilizations of India, in fact. The, uh, the Ram there, uh, Meshas, uh, which means the torrential, right, uh, with reference, which is both Uranic, so that the sky is swollen with stormy clouds and fertilizing one, so the, the spermatic insemination of rain on Earth, right. Um, as many many other cultures. So, it w in considering the importance that this um, seasonal um, precipitations have in the Indian co subcontinent, where it, how important for, for the people of those times reveals the importance of the god. So, it will not be surprising in a nomadic culture uh, like that, pr the, the, the Aryan. Um, the, the primitive Aryan one, right? The re relationship between the stormy sky and the image of the celestial ram, shepherd of the clouds that carry the storm. So it's both a uh, celestial and uh, pastoral symbol, which uh, is naturally associated with the Indo European tradition. In the Rig Veda, the warrior god rain and thunder Indra is represented as a warlike ram. And if we keep in mind that Indra is par excellence, the tiller of fortresses, mm -hmm. and at this point uh, the temptation to bring the ram closer to the siege device of the same name would be very strong. The link between warrior force and sexual energy, uh, as, as we've seen the ram as a violator of closed doors and impregnable fortresses, is, is well clear, right? Hence, a first observation on the bipolar character that is both f f fertilizer and destroyer, let's say, of the energy of the ram, an element that will return among the characterizing data of the constellation in the astrological tradition, in fact. In the Upanishads, um, it is in the guise of, of the ram that Indra teaches the doctrine of oneness of the supreme principle, right? So, literally the highest uh, level of uh, divine. And in fact, the god uh, himself says, I have changed into a ram for your happiness. You have come to the low for your own good. Right? Uh, so a regulatory principle, an absolute one, uh, authoritative one. And if Indra is the head of the devas, that is the divine, in fact, 
to properly think here the, the deep connections also the linguistical ones in the Indo-European like Devas is from saying for saying uh, Deus in Latin and Zeus right is oh, in the West now the divine ram also belongs as an attribute to an uh, asura that the Vedas approach to Devas that is um, to Agni in fact and the fire who is at the same time messenger of the gods to whom the blood sacrifices of which the fire is medium and, domes and domestic god protector of the earth centered the house a resplendent luminous benevolent god and he is the lord of all that is light on earth including gold and even in here banally Agni in beta if you pick latin uh, uh, there is Agnus which is the lamp proper and Ignis which is fire right see here the connection um, so this relationship of the ram with the earth um, seems typical of the Indo-European world and therefore it can be traced back to explain the uh, Andirona hearthstones adorned with ram heads that are found for example in the Celtic world as well, and one always remains uh, uncertain when it comes to hazarding a judgment by the hypothetical on the origins or any influences of, re of religions in, in Greece. We see that the, um, the ram has an important symbolic place in two mm, directions. Like, there is a solar uranic one as an animal sacred to Apollo, so the, you know, the sun, and the suggestion of Ammon could be present. In fact, who thinks? Um, but who thinks instead of the relationship between Vedic and then Brahmanic culture and Hellenic culture in the wake of the Indo-European wave of the end of the second millennium uh, BC instead prefers to bring Apollo closer to Indra however the work of mixed as well but this is also a soteric um, animal like as a symbol of Hermes who in his role as divine messenger could be related to Agni in, in the Veda as well. So, mm, for example, among the Dorians, well, um, they, uh, the, Dorians, uh, the Dorians adored um, that Apollo, that Pindar, calls Carneus. Now, in the form of a ram, he was the counselor of the shepherds and the protector of the flocks, whom he saved from episodic and from wild beasts. Uh, in Sparta, in August, September, the nine-day feasts called Carneia were celebrated in his honor. In Tanagra, in Boeotia, uh, Hermes was hailed as the savior of the flocks from Episodic. We would take a ram on his shoulders and lead it around the city in a rite that would remove the scourge. And this is Hermes Creophor, that is to say, the bearer of the ram which in Greek, in fact, is Krios, and was perhaps one of the formal models of the Christian Good Shepherd as well. Iconographically, it's basically uh, it's, it's very similar, uh, not identical, actually. And it has been noted that the root uh, KR and Kern um, includes the ideas, uh, I mean, in the European languages, the ideas of power and elevation. In fact, it is connected with the horns and the crown. In Latin, in Italian, uh, think about corona. Literally, it means crown. And uh, um, and uh, this, uh, let's say, keep this root clearly evident in in, in both wars. And, and Apollo Carneus, um, so he's such as a, as an Arius god, therefore provided with horns and lord of the radiant crown of Apollo, the crown of the sun. You see here how how the circle closes, but also. As a dar uh, as darting lord of uh, lord of the keraunos, that is of the arrow, and that of, of the kerata of the horns, from which keratin also comes from, in fact, and um, attributes that it is not by chance that he shared with Belenus, that is the Celtic Apollo, and after all, Apollo and Belenus are variants of the same name etymologically speaking in the Indo-European languages. So we have seen Egypt. Uh, Vedic, Brahmanic, India, Greece. Uh, we observe these traces of cryolatry, we could say, in these three countries, perhaps passing also through Nubia, ruled by a royal dynasty of Ethiopian origin. 
um, we are in one way or another forced to return to, to these countries if we consult the biblical vision of Daniel, Daniel 8, 1 to 21, where the um, ram with um, long but unequal horns uh, is the medo persian empire, which is faced and killed by a goat with only one horn coming from the west, that is from Alexander the Great, you know, the, Daniel's prophecy was about, you know, the succession of all the various empires would uh, rule the war. And however, the uh, r uh, the ram, that is the Arius, which um, Daniel's text assigns to the Achaemenid power, would seem fit um, to fit more closely uh, with Alexander himself, whom the Arab tradition calls Al Iskandar to Karnain. Karnain means Alexander the Bicorn, right? And in fact, if you look at numismatics and uh, this. Um, this uh, attribute is present among Hellenistic rulers as well. You see, actually, the, the guy if I've posted here some picture has properly Arius, I mean, a human being with the Arius uh, horns. And the horns are, as is well known, a symbol of dominion. And as such, they are often connected because of the, the male uh, leaders of, uh, of the flock, etc., command, etc., in the way of fight, the, you know, the, they are the weapons, essentially, the arms, uh, the, the symbol of virility and all this. They're connected with the crowns, as we've seen. Two horns could further symbolize the power of Alexander extending, stretching across east and west at the same time. But there is something uh, more as well, right? Because um, that is a symbology is found even, you know, by Sepp's eagle, for example, if I'm among the Seljuks, among the Byzantines and other... Um, Ura lots of other Eurasian peoples, but uh, c going back to Alexander, Alexander loved from a very young age a two-horned god who had conquered India. It was Dionysus, often depicted with bull horns, by the way. I um, think even there the connection with Mithraism, the, the, bull, the slaughtered bull, uh, etc., in the sacrifice, and so was the, the Aris in this, um, in this other context. So later, between the winter of 332 and the spring of 331, after having conquered Tyre, uh, at the end of a long siege, famously enough, uh, he literally built land on, on water, and having rejected the peace offers of Darius III, the Macedonian arrived in Egypt, visited the sanctuaries of Heliopolis and Memphis, some of the most important um, in the region, founded Alexandria, and finally dared to set out for the oasis of Siva, in the heart of Libya, of the Libyan desert, facing, in fact, uh, as the armies of Cambyses that had already done in getting fundamentally as warm and uh, the, the the terrible sandstorms of the region, and arrived in the oasis of Siva. So that wasn't something, you know, to, to keep for granted in the first place. He visited the sanctuary sacred to Amun that stood there, famously enough. It was one of the most important oracles, like Delphi or the Kuman Sibyl, etc., uh, the ancient world. So the priests acclaimed him son of that god. Son of Amon. Right, and Plutarch added in this sense that, quote, the, the rumor spread that they also called him son of Zeus. Uh, this is interesting also because of the, ambi the, the, the relative ambivalence existing with the, you know, the Ketonic and the Uranic element here that is coupled. Now, in Jewish and therefore Christian scripture, however, the most important areas is not that of Daniel's prophecy, but that of Abraham's sacrifice. Because the use of a ram as a sacrificial animal in is ancient and widespread, right? As the best head of the flock, it was an animal by definition delegated to sacrifice. In the cults of Attis and Tsubele, the Creobolus was also practiced. Um, and it was similar to the Mithraic Tauro volume, as we were saying before. The faithful um, was placed under the altar of the um, uh, of on the of which the ram was sacrificed, right, in, and washed with its blood. Now, in the patristic exegesis of the episode of the sacrifice of Abraham, however. 
the uh, I mean of Isaac by, by his father the presence of the ram as a Christ symbol was emphasized in prophecy right it was Augustine actually to, who proposed this because you see the, the biblical account presents Abraham turning uh, after the hand of the angel prevented him from turning weapon against his son, his son Isaac, to an Arius, who was providentially imprisoned um, within uh, among the thorns of um, of the, at the place of sacrifice. So um, Isaac becomes a figure of humanity saved by the sacrifice of the ram. Then naturally, the 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 later Christian tradition would identify in the Lord and the thorns of the bush in which the animal remained imprisoned allude in the context of this reading to the crown of thorns itself which is one of the instruments of the passion now uh, the object of uh, the paschal sacrifice in the Jewish tradition is undoubtedly a lamb however it sometimes tends iconographically to approach the ram, perhaps also due to the attraction between the pagan theme of the Hermes Cryophor and the Christian one of the Good Shepherd, right? So that rams appear together with the sheep in the flocks, symbol of the blessed in many representations of the last judgment, opposed to the impure goats and the left, um, uh, let's say, you know, uh, and who, according to the Gospel of Matthew, are the uh, figure of the of the outcasts. So in the moralization of pagan myths in Christian terms, the Homeric tale of Ulysses would also later, uh, you know, have uh, significance coming out of the cave of Polyphemus hidden under the belly of a large ram, right? So this is... Uh, uh, um, a voyage into to hell, right? It also is present in the Odyssey in other forms, but fundamentally, um, this is a symbol of a man who, entrusting himself to Christ, which is, was the later Christian's thought, escapes uh, sin, hell, which the Cyclops gave is a symbol, right? So the ram takes you out again, makes you relief from making you escape from the underground for, from the tonic dimension the seven horned lamb of the apocalypse is also famous and sometimes represented with the horns of a ram with seven horns, seven eyes now in the medieval world the presence of the Arius is affected through the uh, Christian meditation of its Egyptian, Indian and Hellenic presuppositions but undoubtedly its astral character prevails as a constellation that presides over the beginning of the year and spring and that is in relationship with the planet and god Mars also in alchemical language for the same reason it represents the beginning of the great work so always the initiator, the new start, the newborn uh, enterprise. And the type dominated by uh, the influence of Arius is sanguine, choleric, generous, characterized by intense vitality and pronounced virility. Rare, on the other hand, is the ram as a heraldry figure, in which case it is um, ordinarily passing through. In short, um, it is preferred not to use it to indicate those virile and warlike characteristics of which it would also seem as an ideal symbol, but the ram suddenly jumped in the 15th century to the apex of symbolic emblematic fantasies of Europe when Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, founded um, the court order of chivalry known as the Golden Fleece which then from the house of Burgundy passed to that of Habsburg in the two Spanish and Austrian branches. And it would become the most coveted of the European orders for over three centuries. The story that inspired the Toison, right, that is the Fleece, is well known. According to the Hellenic myth, two noble young people, Frisius, uh, Frisius excuse me, and his sister Ellen, unjustly persecuted, were saved from their persecutors thanks uh, to Zeus who sent a cloud from heaven that hid a prodigious ram with a golden fleece. Having grabbed the, mm, the precious four on the fly, the two would have escaped flying towards Colchis, except that flying over the stretch of sea that is now the Hellespont, and which for this reason would have received this name, um, she would have let go and would have fallen into the waters. And 
freezes on the contrary would have a right safeling Colchis where um, to, in order to thank Zeus he would have sacrificed the ram hanging its golden fleece from an oak to guard over um, which a dragon was placed. Sub uh, subsequently the Argonauts led by Jason and with the help of Medea would have taken possession of the fleece but the Burgundian court did not like the story of Jason. Moreover um, the proverbial bad fate of that hero towards his beloved Medea lent itself to easy iron, let's say, and someone might have observed that the treacherous policy of the dukes, right, perpetually posed between France and England um, during the Hundred Years' War and beyond, was inspired by such mythical dishonesty, right? And then the Chancellor of the Order, who was the learned Bishop Jean Germain, found in the Bible another toison. It was the fleece the Gideon had spread during the night and which had collected a prodigious divine dew, proof of the election of the people of Israel. This is from the Judges 6 um, to, from 33 to 40. That fleece was interpreted in current exegesis as a figure of both the incarnation of the immaculate, uh, um, the incarnation and the, and the immaculate conception associated with the ram fleece, which is the emblem of the order, in the symbolic of that famous association, there are also other symbols, such as the flint and flames, uh, personal emblems of um, of uh, Philip the Good for, from the same French symbology of Orgon and Flamme, and it is certainly a coincidence, but the reference to fire and the tools to light it also present in the Brahmanic cult of Agni, you know, sacred fire in, in, in the Indo-Aryan tradition, seem to recall the ram to the distant origins of its cult. It is one of those coincidence, uh, coincidences of which historicists, uh, structuralists and diffusionists could meditate for a long time, arriving um, as it is understandable to different conclusions, but that in the world of symbols they often occur, in which, and, and of which it is um, not right to pretend not uh, to notice. So for now we stop it here. I just hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did please share it otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming content. And for now I thank you heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye.